What is up, fam? It is I, Agent O, and I am finally back to making videos after a long uh, process of just running into problem after problem with making my videos, like from the technical, from a technical point of view, and then finally getting a new computer set up and new editing software. Um, now I'm back to doing uh, videos and you know toy reviews and and hopefully some movie reviews and some rants and thoughts of videos. So yeah, I'm, I'm finally happy to be back and hoping uh, things go a lot smoother this time around. So without further ado, I'm going to do a Transformer third party figure review on the Fans Project Causality CAO9 Car Crash, which is not breakdown, and Fans Project uh, Causality CA10 T-Bone, which is not Wild Rider, and the reason why I'm doing these two guys together is because I've got the whole, I've got the whole combiner line of these figures, and I really want to get to reviewing Motormaster and uh, Menasaur, the combined, you know, the combiner, but I want to get through these four guys first, I guess the Stunicons that make up the limbs, so I want to get through them first, and, <coughs> excuse me, since Wild Rider and Breakdown are basically the same figure, you know, they have the same exact transformation scheme, and they basically have the same body, this is why I'm kind of doing a double review of these guys, and so I really just want to get into the pros of this figure. Now, the pros are, for the most part, you know, these guys, they're great looking, you know, the design is great looking in, as, as Cybertronians in their robot mode. You know, both figures, they're heavily modified to look drastically different from each other because usually I can't stand buying Transformers that all the all Hasbro did was just change the paint scheme and add a different head, but it's the exact same, um, exact same character. I can't stand that and I can't justify doing, I can't justify paying for basically the same figure with a different head sculpt. But with these two guys, even though it's like the same body, the same body type, and like they have the same legs and the same chest piece, but they changed, they made so many like modifications that it doesn't feel like they're, like they're, like I'm buying the same figure over again. Not to mention that I also need, you know, both these figures in order to make the combiner, but you know... But at least they went out of their way to make it feel like you weren't wasting your money because, you know, after all, third-party figures are rather expensive and I would like to get the best bang for my buck out of these guys. But aside from that, you know, the one of the other things that I feel is really good um, about these, about the look of these guys is how they look like they stepped straight off the IDW comic books. I mean, they don't, they don't, they're not exactly like how they were drawn in the books, but it's like if you were to draw these characters and put them in the comic, they would look fine alongside all the other characters in like More Than Meets the Eye or Robots in Disguise. They don't look out of place at all. And, you know, they have that, they have a really nice blend of this like Cybertronian techno advanced look when they're in the robot mode, but with a combined like Earth Alt mode. So, neither one. Like they like they work in tandem together, and it just really looks nice. Um, the other thing that I really dug about these guys is that there isn't really actually a whole lot of paint apps uh, used on these two figures. Um, it but the but the apps that they put on are they help really break up the all the detailing, and they really help make some of the parts that were sculpted really pop and really adds to the overall aesthetic of these figures. Um, I think there was only like maybe four colors used on each on each guy, and the rest of the body is like each part is cast in the color that it's supposed to be, which is a really good, which is really nice touch. And Hasbro really needs to learn from this so that they can start doing the same thing because they don't do that with all their figures, but they do do that with some of them. But overall, like each part of the character is cast in the color that it's supposed to be, aside from you know where they put paint. And also, uh, I also dig the uh, transformation scheme of these guys. It's a simple transformation, and 
But at the same time, there's like enough movable, transformable parts that it stays interesting. Now, with like these third-party figures, since since some of these uh, transformation schemes can go from like really easy to like really complex, depending on on what the character transforms into and who's making the the toy. I always go, I always, usually I always look at the instructions on how to transform these guys. You, I used to always pride myself on not doing that with Hasbro toys, but since these third-party figures are so much more expensive, and sometimes, in some cases, some parts are more fragile than others, I decided I would, I would look at the instructions and just at least you know the first couple of times I transform it, just so I just so that I don't accidentally move something where in a in a in a direction that I think it's supposed to move, and then I break something off because that would suck to have to buy a a sixty five to one hundred and twenty dollar figure and then have something break off of it that would basically turn it into an ugly piece of junk. And so so the instructions were pretty straightforward, and the transformations. Like I said, it was pretty easy. So, uh, one other thing I wanted to mention was that this tr- specific scheme was... It, it feels like an advanced version of the uh, Transformers Universe uh, Roadbuster figure, which is a repaint of... Uh, oh my god, I can't remember. It was a, It's a Hot Shot figure... Um, from a Japanese line. I can't honestly remember the name of the character or the name of the series or whatever that it came from, but it has some of the same some of the same parts move, you know, transform a, a somewhat the same way that 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 universe figure does. But it feels like like Fans Project took that scheme and then expanded on it because where everywhere where the Roadbuster figure lacks uh, posability and articulation, these two guys have it. And speaking of uh, articulation, the posability of these guys is just really, really great. I mean, they have great range of motion, and you can get a variety of poses. Um, their shoulders are on ball joints. They have double, they have um, double elbows and double knees, and their their feet are on ball. Their ankles are on ball joints, so. You can get all kinds of like wide stance poses out of these guys, and I mean for the most part it's just fun playing around with them. Also, forgot to mention they also have a hip swivel, which I think should be standard on every Transformer character that as if, as much as possible. Now I know an ab crunch would be asking too much, but it can be done. Uh, I've seen it done. We've all seen it done. The Motobot, uh, the uh, the RC figure that um, Perfect Effect did, she had a, uh, a ab crunch, which I thought was really cool. So, you know, if you know that to me, that's I mean, it's a non-issue, but it'd be great if it was there. If it's not, oh well, what are you gonna do? But like I said, posability is great. Now I have a couple uh, mixed feelings on a couple things on these guys. One is the backpack on. On breakdown and wild rider it's not entirely horrible and it just it just sticks out a little bit too much and but it doesn't it doesn't hinder the weight distribution of the figure at all so so it's it's, it's good in that respect and it does double as a wep as weapon storage when the when they're in the robot modes it's just uh i don't know it just kind of when you're when you're doing certain poses and you see it just sticking out there, it, it, it is a little bit off-putting. Um, might be, might not be for other people. It just was for me. It's, it's more. This is more of a nitpick than an actual, uh, I guess, uh, cr- uh, criticism on something that they should have done better. Uh, the other thing I had a, a little bit of a nitpick with is the blatant hole in the crotch area of the figure. It's 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 not hard to miss, even though I know that it's more than likely serves a purpose during the gestalt mode or the combiner mode. It's just it's just there. You can choose to ignore it if you want or if you can. I noticed it. I figured I'd mention it. Um, not really a big deal. Doesn't hinder or take away from the figure at all. It's just something I noticed, and 
and I and I it, it it bothered me for a little bit, even though I know it shouldn't. Um, one other thing I also did have a um, I had mixed feelings about was in in their vehicle mode, the hinge joint um, at the back of the at the back of the car mode. It's blatantly obvious that it's an actual hinge joint. It's more so obvious with breakdown than it is Wild Rider because it's cast in this gray this grayish color and wild rider for the most part in this vehicle mode is all white except for the windows and the and the red racing stripe on the hood um like but but since since break since wild rider is wait a minute I'm sorry breakdown is mostly white wild rider is pretty much all black and it blends in more on Wild Rider than it does Breakdown, if I didn't already say that. Sometimes I get these two characters' names mixed up. But, uh, since it was, since it, it should have been, it should, they should have cast that hinge joint in the same white color that Breakdown is cast in. And then it wouldn't look so bad. It wouldn't look so out of place. But, I mean, aside from that, all peg holes and, um, hinge joints and all that stuff is all covered up in vehicle mode. And it really helps the vehicle look seamless and and look like an actual vehicle unlike say the fall of cybertron um jazz figure where you can see a ginormous hinge joint on each side of the car during its in its vehicle mode so you know those were my those were my main complaints or you know my mixed main mixed feelings about you know this these two guys um now for the cons of this figure and there are some cons. Um, I did mention earlier that I'd like the transformation uh, scheme of this guy, but that's also one of the big problems of this figure. Probably the biggest problem with this figure. I did do a little video on it, so on the transformation, I didn't, I didn't, I'm not showing you the entire transformation because I fucking hate when people do that shit in their reviews and everyone does it. I fucking cannot stand that shit. It's like 10 minutes of me watching this dude fumble around trying to transform his figure. If you're going to do it, if you're going to do those, if you're going to shoot that part of your of your review, then at least transform the figure like three or four times before you even turn on the camera and start recording so that you've got an idea of what everything is supposed to do and where everything's supposed to go because I don't want to sit there and waste my time watching you fumble around with the figure. It, it's just, it's so beyond frustrating. And I, I end up skipping a lot of people's reviews because once they get to that point, I don't want to, I don't want to find out anything else they have to say. It's just such a time filler. It's it's unreal. Um, the other thing, I the other reason why I hate these, I hate watching people transform this stuff on on screen during their review is because transforming a transformer is that's one of the big fun things about it. Like it's not like a let's. This isn't a let's play video where you watch somebody play through the game. This is just watching somebody transform the figure. You know, that's something that is more fun when you yourself do it and you're figuring it all out for yourself and, 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 and it's fun. Like, like, like watching somebody transform a figure in a review, it's pretty much like, like watching somebody expose and explain how a magic trick works, you know. You know, all of a sudden the magic of it is gone. Like the whole "how did he do that?" is all gone when it's explained to you, and and all the and and there's like no surprise or no suspension of disbelief there. So, the only reason why I'm doing this like little video segment is just to show on camera how hard it was for me to transform certain parts of the guy of this guy, and it and that in and of itself takes away from the fun factor of these figures because it's supposed to be kind of a smooth transition when you're transforming a a character from robot to vehicle mode or vice versa so that's unfortunate so without further ado here's the video okay I'm gonna show you what I was talking about when I mentioned how hard it was to get at least the arms and the legs into place during transformation. Now, uh, 
Now it's it's kind of easy to get it like in, like right about to here. Then you really have to like push to get it to click into place. Which is kind of, which is nice if you didn't have to push as hard, because I kind of like how when you when it clicks into place, it stays there. But then getting it out of place is like super hard. Like I really have to pull in order to get this guy separated, in order to get the arm separated from the rest of the elbow. Like that's a lot of work, and it feels like every time I do it, I'm going to break the figure. I'm going to break the arm of the figure, which would really, really piss me off. I would not be a happy Transformer fan if that shit happened. Um, same thing with the leg on this guy. You flip it around to the back and you kind of move this panel. And you can see, you can see like right in here and here where the, where the upper, where the lower part of the thigh connects to the rest of the leg. If you, you have to kind of like pull it a little bit to separate, to separate that, that notch in there to get it apart and even then it still doesn't come completely off because you have to do the same thing to the other side on this bottom part on this inside part of the leg just to get it to to move and it's it's like too much of a good thing honestly it's too much it's too much work in order to get it to uh in order to get the figure to transform and it's a little time consuming and like i said earlier it takes the fun it takes a little bit of the fun factor out of you know transforming these guys because this is a really good transformation scheme um and it and like i said earlier it feels like like uh like they took the um transformers universe uh roadbuster repaint and just made it better like the transformation scheme with that figure they took the same idea and just made it better for these guys and uh I just wish they would have uh, worked on it a bit more to make sure it, it, it works perfectly instead of uh, having to put a lot of effort into transforming what's really a simple transformation. Simple but fun transformation. Fun if you if it all works. I don't know if, like I have, the prob I have this problem with both these guys and I don't know if it's a QC issue. I don't know if it's an issue with, uh, that other people have had. Um, because I have not watched any of the other reviews, so uh, yeah, I wish uh, I wish they could have squared this little issue away before they put these figures out. It doesn't detract from the overall awesomeness of these guys, but it is it is something there, and it is something to uh, it is it is a downside to to these to these figures because the transformation scheme or transforming any transformer. That's that's why that's why they're called transformers. You shouldn't have a whole lot of problem transforming these guys, and it's kind of unfortunate that that you kind of do um, with these particular figures. Okay, now the other thing I wanted to get to talking about was is the weapon storage in the, in the alt mode. It's a good idea. It's just not so good in its execution. It doesn't the gun the guns you know they split in half. And they fit on the backpack pegs, which which in vehicle mode become the rear of the car. And they fit on those pegs. And they're supposed to look like it. the barrels are supposed to double as exhaust ports for the car. And they kind of work and it kind of doesn't. You can see in the pictures, you know, there's, it, it looks like extra stuff is sticking out of the, out of the, like the muffler like you can see the muffler underneath the car from those angles and it's unfortunate because these are supercars and you don't see that sort of thing on supercars so it like I said it, it works as weapon storage it does it does kind of break the illusion of of these hidden weapons doubling as as exhaust ports for the car in vehicle mode it's just uh, it's just an unfortunate thing but it's not not a horrible thing it's just they I think they could have did a little better in disguising that now with wild rider I did notice that when when in vehicle mode some of the pegs and a portion of his chest like the middle of his chest because it comes to this elevated point it actually is flush with the surface and the wheels so if you're rolling that guy 
If you're rolling that guy around on carpet, that's okay. But if you're on like a hard surface, like your desk or something, you're playing around with these guys or whatever, then that could pose a problem because you might end up rubbing off some paint or you might end up wearing down one of the pegs, you know, by accident because of, you know, due to the friction or whatever. But for some reason, I don't have that problem at all with breakdown. It's, which is odd because... You know, breakdown in the if you're going by the numbers of these guys, the CO, CA09 and CA10, you know, breakdown was actually made before Wild Rider, but Wild Rider is the one with the problem. So it it kind of makes me believe that they made Wild Rider first, and then whatever little issues or problems that they noticed with Wild Rider, they fixed them when they made breakdown, even though they're numbered. You know, it's, it's, this could just be me speculating, but it just seemed odd to me that this particular figure had this problem when the other figure, which is the same exact figure, didn't have this, this problem. And it could also be that it's just my figure in particular. You know, I don't know if anybody else noticed this or had this problem in their review. It was just, I just noticed it with mine, and I haven't watched any other reviews um at the time of this uh, recording of, of for this video, I probably will do it. You know, after I get some of the other stuff up on YouTube, but that's why I figured maybe this was just a QC issue pertaining just to me and me alone. But you know, that's pretty much I think going to do it for these two guys. I'm gonna try and keep these videos kind of short because I really don't think there's a whole lot to be said about these guys. I don't think I could say any more than needs to be said. Uh, they're really good figures. Um, you know, both vehicle and alt mode, I mean, both uh, alt mode and and robot mode look really great, and that's where I think Fans Project really shines um, with the look of these guys. Some of the execution could have used a little bit more work, like the transformation scheme. They could have maybe worked a little bit more on that, so it's a, it's a, it, it's a lot smoother. But yeah, aside from that, I I do, th despite those small problems, I still think these figures are worth getting. So, you know, get them while they're, while they're still available, you know, because like all other third-party figures, once once they're sold out, the prices jump, and the scalpers are trying to take, in, take, take advantage of your pockets. So, get on these guys while you can. Uh, it's definitely worth it. And that's going to do it for now. I'm Agent O, and I am out. Peace.